Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Lexi here with my very, very, very good friend, That's Portia. <laughs> Portia the historian. Portia is actually a historian. I've had her on here a while ago. I will leave that video linked down below and up over here somewhere if you want to check it out. And we're just going to be talking about black women and our hair. That's the point of today's video and the policing of black women and our hair. So Get ready for it. <laughs> we're getting into it's it. It's going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot because Portia give it up. I give it up. It's going to be a lot. Um, we'll go ahead and tell them a little bit about yourself and your like interests and why you're here because Okay, oh my god. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not used to being on camera, but I um, I'm gonna do my best. So a little bit about me. I have a master's degree in US history and public history. So essentially public history is working to make history as a discipline more accessible and useful to the public. So very much my training and my historical practice is rooted in making sure that black folks in particular have access to this knowledge. Um, and I want to empower us uh, because I think when you know better, you do better. Period. Um, thank you. So <laughs> uh, when it comes to black hair, um, some of my research that I did as an undergrad um, at our alma mater focused on uh, mixed race black women in New Orleans. So like, let's talk about hair uh, when it comes to that population, that time period, because we're talking about chattel slavery. So we're gonna get into this this good stuff when Lexi starts asking me me <laughs> questions. It's gonna be it's gonna be a deep dive. If you Definitely will. a deep dive. And I'm more of like a perceptive person, and she actually has the knowledge and the facts and the dates. Okay. <laughs> so I think combining these two things is gonna be a really good, interesting type of video. So comment along as you watch yeah. and let us know your thoughts because it, it might be a little bit radical. Our thoughts because at the end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> At the end of the day, my standpoint is do whatever the hell you want to do with your hair. Absolutely. And don't tell nobody else how to, where to, why to, where do their hair. Okay? That that, that's just my standpoint. So what do you want to talk about first? So I think um, we'll, we'll take it. We'll do some chronological okay. stuff. We'll take it back, right? So I think everybody, for the most part, if you are a black person in this country, you have some kind of understanding of the chattel slave system. Um, and I think when we, we talk about hair, the nature of hair, good hair versus bad hair, it's very much rooted in our perceptions of um, enslavement and mm -hmm. like house slaves versus field slaves. Though um, I do want to say that the practice has moved away from saying slave and we've kind of settled on enslaved okay. actually because that actually goes into the process of how Africans became property right so that's a little more accurate so you will kind of hear me going in and out of saying enslaved versus slave so I, I did want to mention that but um, understanding hair and black hair in that context right is that within tribal nations within uh, the African continent hair had certain status symbols right mm -hmm. but then once you go through the crucible of the Atlantic um, voyage to the new world some of those practices remain, but some of them were lost. And they were lost not because, you know, Africans and their ancestors somehow just forgot. Right. It was white folks, enslavers, um, taking that away. Consciously. Um, yes, yes. Making that, that <laughs> like, no, as a punishment, right? So, like, if I'm coming from the Coromante people um, and I have this very elaborate hairstyle in 1717, my, um, the slave master is going to shave my head as punishment to make sure that I'm broken in, right? right? And so um, you look at certain uh, advertisements for enslaved folks at the time saying, you know, light-skinned woman or whatever phenotype description they want to give. And for the most part, they would actually mention hair because mm -hmm. that was a good indicator of where that person had come from in Africa. And at the time, a lot of... Um, white folks who had enslaved black people they wanted to know what tribe you came from because certain tribes were a little nicer mm. than others some made for better slaves Got than other than others and so uh the hair was one way to know that and so once i've taken you to um 
to the plantation, I'm now going to shave your head and start you anew and break you in. So you have that aspect of, of um, hair within, within slavery. Um, I think by the 19th century, the practice is, okay, we're no longer doing these elaborate African hairstyles. Everything is close cropped or mm -hmm. braided just for the fact that we do not have time. Slavery does not give us time to take care of our hair. Because right. if you are enslaved, Monday through Saturday, you have to work. Sunday was the only day of rest. And that was the day that people were able to do their hair. And so do I have time to do these elaborate hairstyles? No, I'm just gonna have cornrows. I'm gonna have close cropped hair if I'm a man, et cetera, et cetera. And it's sitting out of slavery and into a time that they were granted freedom, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? And able to do their hair on their own. And we had products and we had relaxers. Can you dive into that transition? Yeah. I'll word it that way. Okay, for sure. So. After you have um, emancipation, right, you have at this point several million people who are newly freed and not just, we're not, we're not talking about just like out of bondage, like they have to be included into the fabric of this country, into this new workforce, etc. This, this is a huge transition, right? Mm -hmm. And so for black women in particular, our main role in the labor force was as domestic. So from 1865 through like the 19th century, so almost a full century, the vast majority of us who were working women worked as domestics for white people, white businesses, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And so when you work as a domestic in a white person's home, they had a code of conduct mm. that you had to follow that included um, dress, right? And so um, if you typically wore your hair in a certain style that was not seen as becoming, um, you know, you're not gonna get high, you're not gonna get that job, or you know, or if you already have the job, you're gonna be punished in, in some way, your pay is going to be docked, etc. Mm -hmm. And so you have the practice, once chemical lye comes around, uh, so that's right, you have no lye relaxers now, but at the beginning of that process, you only had lye, <laughs> relaxers and so or just lye soap which people would use to straighten their hair and style it and so you see that kind of happening towards the latter half of the 19th century because for some people I don't think at the time they internalized this as a as a a tool of white supremacy it right. was just more like I gotta work I have like you know for us we have if you have thick 4a 4b 4c hair Sometimes you don't want to be bothered, right? right so right. if I'm raising my 17 children, I'm working these crazy jobs, I, I'm not going to want to deal with my hair. I'm going to put this thing in it, slick into a bun, and now I'm able to work. And you are more likely to be hired. Exactly. And paid a different, maybe different level of pay. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're treated better by other people. Yes. And it created, even I think in our communities, you would look at somebody else and say, hmm, you're more mm -hmm. the closer you cleaner, are, presentable. Yes. yes. Right, because it happens now. It happens <laughs> it definitely now. Happens it happens now. now. The same thing. Like we treat each other the same way, and that you are more. Mm -hmm. That's the word. Yes. Like that's yes. the word. Very much. You so. look good. You look better than the others. You're different. You're not others. like those other Negroes, which is exactly. a is a distinctive thing. So taking backtracking a little bit back to, um, you know, the period of chattel slavery. Um, White women, <laughs> we're gonna start talking more about white people. I feel like I focus a lot on white men, uh, but white women also right own slaves. They like sh we were also their property. They got left slaves by their parents after they passed away, or they themselves were allowed to purchase um, chattel um, at markets depending on whatever state you were in. So um, I bring this up because in certain cases, uh, white women would be the ones to shave black women's hair. Yeah. So um, one of the things that I came across in Louisiana when I was doing research was this woman was really upset because her husband had taken a liking to one enslaved woman in particular because she had very long waist length straight black hair. Mm -hmm. So it was different than, you know, um, the kind of, well, you'll see a lot in the archive um, uh, slave hair described as woolly mm -hmm. and unkempt and you know these words and stuff and so the fact that she had this long black hair she was also very dark skinned that was also mentioned that it was a very unique look 
that she had and her husband clearly found this woman attractive and so when he was away she summoned her from her cabin brought her to the main house and brutally clip like close cropped her hair and the woman had to have her hair that way for the rest of her life as long as she was on that plantation the the slave mistress always cut her hair mm -hmm. and so i bring that up only because i think that's where we're also seeing this um good hair conversation happening because if you know, if I'm one of the other slave women on the plantation, I'm going to be like, oh, well, she's getting from the slave master. Like, you're getting nicer treatment. He's treating you better. Also, now you're a target targeted by his wife. Like, you know, and I think that's when you so, internalize. Yes. You internalize what's good and what's bad. Mm -hmm. Right. So For sure. I, I did want to bring that up, that white women were part of the brutality of and course. also that there were distinctions between good and bad hair that I'm sure enslaved folks were starting to kind of think about um, when when you see things like that. Because that wasn't uncommon for um, black women to have their heads shaved um, as a punishment for having nicer hair. hair. Yeah, I'm getting emotional <laughs> because I think that we're so hard on each other. Mm -hmm. Now I feel like more than ever about our twist with our hair, about how and why and when. And I think that we don't realize how deep rooted our issues go. Even if you don't have the knowledge like you do, it's like the like the compassion of like maybe she just wants because easier for her. Yes. And why do I have to police that and berate yes. her and judge her for wearing her hair a certain way? Like why does it matter to you? You know, like my channel, as you guys know, is here just to help, not to convince, not to <laughs> change your ideas. Be like, a resource for listen, folks. yes, yeah. exactly, a resource. It's not supposed to be like come over here and feel bad about having a relaxer or yeah. feel bad about. Listen, like, you know, and I think that we are just so hard on each other. We definitely and we don't even are. realize, you know, it's like there should be no divide within us at this point. But it's all intentional and it's just, you know, it's history. So Yeah, it absolutely is very, I think, intentional. And I think sometimes it can be well-meaning in the sense like, so I'll get back to the history part of this. Recently, and by recent in history terms, I'm talking about the post-war era, so post-World War II era, excuse me, and you really don't have an embracing of natural hair until the black power and black arts movement. So prior to that, um, in the 20th century, so 1900 to about 1965, I'm gonna say, you needed to have relaxed hair. You needed to have straight hair. So, I mean, we talked a little bit about the domestic folks, like working in white people's homes, being like, I gotta look a certain way, I gotta keep this job, I gotta get this money up, because black women, we were the core workforce for our community because black men did not have access to the same labor pools that we did by design because white men didn't wanna compete with black men, they didn't wanna give them access to good paying jobs, so that was by design. So you had to rely on black women a lot to do that work. But by the, you know, 1910s, 1920s, 1930s, there is a solid black middle class that is developing in the industrial north in particular. You have the great migration from um, the deep south to places like Chicago, New York City, out to California, actually, and, um, you know, places out west. And so to show that we are these new Negroes, so that's a term that you guys may have heard if you've had some history classes, like the need the new Negro movement. So this idea that we are no longer enslaved, we are no longer these second class citizens, we're coming into this new century as a new people, as a freed people, as a people moving forward. And so unfortunately, in some aspects, people have right already internalized whiteness, white beauty standards. So part of that new Negro movement is looking a certain way. So do you feel like the new Negro movement in present day can be compared to like the politics that are full of respectability and the idea that you have to be look this way, act this way, to have respect, you won't get killed by the police, and you won't get judged if you look and act like a good black person. I think there's definitely similarities between the two movements. I think at the time you have folks um, who are who are railing against white supremacy while also having this hair slicked back, they're also lighter skinned, they're benefiting from mm -hmm. colorism, which is, a, we haven't dived into that just yet, but I'm sure we'll get to that. Um, but you, I, I would say um, definitely that, 
to talk about the new Negro movement of the early 20th century, that respectability that was there was legitimately coming from a place of safety. And it was needed. And it, yes, yes. So for, so um, I'm going to center black women because that's what I, I, I always want to do with my scholarship. For. Okay, like that's what we're doing. So um, there's this really awesome historian, Evelyn Brooks Higginbotham. I, I, I met her once. Mama was unimpressed. I was like, hey, I'm a huge fan. Your work is so central to my scholarship. And she was like, cool. <laughs> Uh, I hear this all the time because I'm Evelyn Brooks Higginbotham. But anyway, she's great. She's Her writing's fantastic. And she focused on black church women in okay. the early 20th century, at the, at basically at the turn of the 20th century, 1890s to the 1910s. And so coming out of slavery where we were raped, where we were sexualized, where these stereotypes that said that we deserved to have that treatment because we were hypersexual, because we were animalistic, you know, these women took up the mantle of respectability to negate all of those stereotypes as a way to protect ourselves and give us access to womanhood. Because for black women, right. we have not had access to the same um, modes of womanhood white women have. White women are placed on a pedestal. Um, like people have been lynched in the name of protecting this white womanhood, this concept of it. And so for black women, black church going women at the time, they were creating this kind of culture of respectability in hopes that see we are animalistic we yes. are we're the, feminine yes yeah exactly yes. like hyper yeah. feminine so like they had you know the corsets the bustles all these things that you were not obviously not allowed to wear when you were enslaved right you're for very much we black women when we were enslaved we not only had to work as hard as the men physically we were expected to pick as much cotton as they were depending on what the crop was we also had fall we fell prey to the sexual proclivities of the slave master. So we're being, at, so we're, we're just not having access to the same safety that womanhood had, had granted white women in the Got past. It. So when we're talking about respectability in that, within that context, it's slightly different in that I think Negroes now, we should know better. Right. We should know that no matter what, how we dress, we can fall prey to state violence. Um, but you know, if I'm a and judgment, and ju absolutely, judgment and and so much. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you're 100. percent I get it. I get what you're saying. So, so I, I I didn't want to mention mention that. <laughs> that was like I got to make sure I'm covering. I don't want some another historian person to be like, "Bitch, you didn't, you didn't mention Evelyn this. You didn't. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, don't come for me. I want you no, to know. You guys already know. It's a place <laughs> of love. This is a place of love, especially like, especially when we bring. I have. I've never really have guests. So it's definitely a place of love. And I want to talk more about hair, right? Yeah, so we've course. gotten all of the historical, like a little bit of context yeah. that we can get right now that has to do with black women and our physical appearance in general, mm -hmm. right? But when it comes to our hair, you're mentioning that in the black power movement, they were diving into not having relaxers. And yeah. like we already know, we've seen the picture, we've yes. seen, you know, we all, I think everyone in America has seen the Black Power photos and images. Evangela Davis yes, and her yes. natural and everything. We've all seen And notice it. that all those black women you see with those afros in Black Panther photographs are mostly light skinned. Right. Most so light we could talk about that. And probably <laughs> didn't have type 4 hair mm -hmm. if they mm -hmm. weren't to mm -hmm. pick it out, which is a whole different combo and nothing wrong with it. But I think that it does change the narrative a bit because yeah. where were we, you know? And I think that has to do also with, the, with Rosa Parks a little bit I know, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. about how she was the second choice, yes. you know, to, to lead that boycott. And the other woman was darker. Claudette um, Colvin, yeah. She was darker, different hair. Was also pregnant. And pregnant. And 15. So all of that, mm -hmm. you know, goes against... And that's, that's an example of respectability politics. So white people will not take this movement seriously if an unmarried, dark-skinned, 15-year-old pregnant girl is leading us. And she's the face of it, mm -hmm. right. So I guess I want to talk more about the transition from the Black Power Movement into a time that we, that perming our hair went back up, right? Like the yeah. numbers went back up. We left out of the movement of natural mm -hmm. and do us and love us and buy us for us yeah. into a different time because mm -hmm. we were born after these times, yeah. right? So yeah. I feel like I was born into a time where you had to have a you had to have relaxer, <laughs> yeah. and it wasn't even a question. We didn't really have that black power. We never had black power. I feel like until the very until very recently, very recently, with absolutely under the circle again. So go ahead and dive into that, I guess. 
So um, I think it's important to understand that um, black power was not um, popular at the time where it seemed like it was taking over everything, right? Like I have parents who grew up in the 1970s and they're very much like, you know, we wore naturals, we were this, we were that, blah, blah, blah. But in actuality, you still have people getting relaxers. Of it was mostly just younger people who had a backlash against their parents, against the civil rights movement, against MLK and this old guard that they saw were too obedient to whiteness that were sporting these, these hairstyles, right? So once the black power movement fails, which I, I use quotation marks because there's an argument to be had about that that we don't need to get into. But essentially, when it when it collapses mm-hmm. by the mid '70s, that aesthetic choice because it was also an aesthetic choice. It, and we're not just talking about you know slogans and ideology. We're talking about aesthetics right now. And so there were people who just followed the Black Power movement because they liked the fashion. They liked the all black, the leather and they jacket. Were some bad yeah, because like, <laughs> this shit looked cool. It does. It looks. It's still striking to this day. Remember, Beyonce took on the iconography of the Black Power uh, movement and the Black Panthers in her Super Bowl performance, which mm-hmm. you know, uh, for some folks, was problematic for for different reasons. For conservatives, it was like, how dare this Black woman remind us that she's a Negro? And then for Black leftists, it was like, how dare this capitalist co-op, this anti-capitalist ideology, etc. But point being, by the time the movement collapses, you know. Other styles are coming forward, and for you to achieve some of the, like, if you want to look like Donna Summer, you need a relaxer. You're going to need a relaxer. <laughs> you want to look, or a texturizer or something, right? So that that afro falls out of fashion. Yes, right? And so other things take its place, right? So by the 1980s, you see Denise Huxtable, um, Lisa Bonet, who's obviously very beautiful, um, she clearly, at different points, has chemicals in her hair. Mm-hmm. And same thing with Vanessa Huxtable, the darker skinned sister. Um, she, just to, not to use the Cosby, I know, we know Bill, what Bill Cosby did. But just like looking at like this very diverse black family, if you look over the course of the seasons, you see the transformation of the hairstyles from the early 1980s to when the show finally ends in the 90s. And so I think for a lot of people, it's more about, oh, I just want to achieve this look. Which I think today is very true. Like, right. I'm wearing these braids with, like, human hair things that are clearly not my hair texture because I just think it's a cool look for the summer. But I think at the same time, you're still seeing black folks being discriminated against in the corporate world. Of so course. after World War II, um, black folks are entering into the workforce. We are going into corporate environments. So, like, when black women were domestics, now we're no longer that. We are accountants, we're secretaries, we are finally accessing these places we've never been before, and now we gotta look the part. Because same thing when they were domestics, you have this code of conduct, this way you're supposed to look and dress. So I think if I'm a secretary at an ad agency in 1985, and I'm the only black woman, and people are making comments about my hair, I'm gonna relax if it's not already relaxed. And so when I go on to have a child, I already know what she's up against. I'm going to make sure she's relaxing her hair. And so I think at this point, we we are fully entrenched in European beauty standards. I want to kind of stop here mm-hmm. to talk a little bit more about the idea that black women were having children in the 90s and relaxing their hair mm-hmm. for a very good point because they knew what they were up against. This is a very good point. They knew what the world had in front of them, you know, there really wasn't an argument. Like, my child wants to be a doctor. She wants to be a lawyer. She cannot have her little fro out. She needs to have her hair yep. relaxed and pressed and hot combed and yep. ready to go. And, and that, that's what it is. And for us, I think now in 2020, to, to judge women who choose to wear, to have a relaxer or choose to wear wigs 24-7, you know, or choose to do, like, extensions, whatever the case is, to bring it now that we understand our history, right? Because we already know why, we should know why women wear, Mm -hmm. black women use relaxers. Like we should know that that was not just because we wanted to, because we had the idea, like, 
Shout out to Valentine J. Walker. Walker yes, course. I know I didn't go into you know, her, but y'all but know that story. Hopefully. We already know it, but I think that it's like we have. It was a need, like you mentioned yes. at the time. It was a need. So again, I just feel like I see so much hatred in in different comments on Twitter or whatever Absolutely. about wigs and weaves, and it's like. Where is your compassion? Where is your empathy? Where is the mind to say, hmm, this person is just following what they've been told needs to be done to get somewhere in this country in this lifetime? You know what I'm saying? Everyone does not want to be a freedom fighter. Yeah. Or want to be um, a billboard for anything. Mm -hmm. Some folks want to get some money, raise their family, and live peacefully. Bodily autonomy. And if, yeah. if, and, if, and if you want to do that with the life that you've been given and you want to have a relaxer to get there or you feel in your heart that you have to have that to get to your level that you want to mm -hmm. be at, who am I to tell you no, sis? Yeah. Go natural, sis. It's your choice. Us. Who am I and who are any of us to tell you. somebody else? Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the, thing, the reason I had this video idea is I did a video... Um, watching Kat Graham's uh, mm -hmm. Vogue Beauty Secrets. You have seen that. That video did so well. I've it's seen your, going yeah. crazy. It's yeah. going crazy. Thank, I'm so thank proud. <laughs> thank y'all. You know, I'm here. I'm trying. And in the video, she was crying. She talked about, to simplify it, how she's never seen or done her hair in all of her life. Okay? And she's biracial, but her hair mm -hmm. is on the more, I would say, kinkier side. She has some curls in there, but her hair is definitely not ringlets, loose curls. Yeah by far, right? And she's been wearing wigs and weaves and relaxers her whole life. Mm -hmm. And people are commenting saying that, you know, why I feel bad for her, you know, she chose this and da 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 and you know, it's like, do you not understand that she felt she didn't have a choice, you know? And she wants, she mentioned in the video that she wanted hopefully to one day play someone who looks like her. That's what she wants, hopefully one day. Hopefully, is what she said, <laughs> out of her own mouth. She knows what it's like to be black or to be biracial and have to fight to get every job and to have to hustle to get every job and be denied probably over and over again for someone else. Yep. You know, how do you have white? Oh, you know. Absolutely. So it's like, again, who are we saying, it's up to you, Kat Graham, or up to you, so-and-so, mm -hmm. to break the America's viewpoint of black women and be the person that breaks the chains and be the person that changes. Like, Have some I don't compassion. know, like, what, are, what are you doing? <laughs> like, I just feel like you gotta tell somebody else to be mm -hmm. the person to change the world. What are you doing? What, exactly. I think you there's know? a lot of keyboard warriors online. Yes. Yeah. Who, like, actively in your community, what what work are you doing? Because, Not a damn thing. Because mama can have relaxed <laughs> hair and be out here donating to bail funds mutual aid funds, like doing the work in her community to support black lives. Right. Um, and just because she doesn't have an Afro, you are negating her experience as a black woman. Her and I existence. Think, yeah, yeah, because Kat Graham, I've always enjoyed Kat Graham. I was one of those, like, weird CW Vampire Diaries people. <laughs> and, you know, and it would, you know, and colorism is a different conversation as far as me being, like, as a dark skin woman, being like, damn, none of these black girls are ever darks and none of them ever look like me yeah. but that still does not negate her experience as a woman of color as a mixed race black woman mm -hmm. navigating hollywood her whole life her whole life where they do not value black women in particular but right. black people you know more generally and so for people to because i did read the comments on the video when it first aired because you know people on twitter were talking about it and i was like oh lord yeah oh lord and i think you know, and I had, I, I think I've always had conflicting feelings since I first went natural in 2011 because I got a lot of pushback from my family. Mm -hmm, me too. And so, you know, at the time, I very much was like a natural hair Nazi being like, y'all are self-hating. Like, I'm so glad that I'm growing up in a time where I have access to YouTube videos and the internet and social media for supportive people because y'all are out here. Like, my dad was like, you'll never get a job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nobody's going to hire you. I had a cousin recently, which, hey, girl, if you if you watch, if you follow me on Instagram, <laughs> but she's a hairdresser, right? And um, she was like, Portia, you know, I can do your hair. I do natural hair. And then she would show me pictures on her phone, on her, her Blackberry. This is how long ago that was. <laughs> um, and, like, all of these natural hair women have blown out hair or, like, the, re there's, the front is relaxed. Stuff like that, which uh, you know, is still happening. So uh, I'm sitting here, and I'm like, 
I don't know if I want you to do my hair because it doesn't really sound, you know, whatever. And then get this, we're like at my auntie's house, her like her mom's house, and she is just going off about my hair. I think I have Marley twists in, right? And I was telling her like, oh yeah, I want to do a protective style because I'm busy this semester. And this YouTuber I like did Marley twists, so I went and got Marley twists. She was like, then you're not natural. And see, this is my thing with natural hair people. If y'all want to be natural, just wash your hair and let it be natural. Oh y'all want y'all want to do twist styles. <laughs> y'all want to do braid outs. Like she's just going off. And she's like, I, and I, you know, Portia, I try to be nice, but you need to know you don't look professional right now. You look like all you do is smoke weed and do whatever. <laughs> the point being is like, since then I've had to hold space for her and hold grace for her and be mm -hmm. like, you know what, she, this is, cause she's, she's in her late forties now. So I'm like, you are growing up, you were growing up in a time where you did have to have a rela relaxer outside of maybe wearing box braids or doing whatever. Like you had to have straight hair. You had to navigate a different landscape than I had to you know right. now so you know i've like definitely forgiven her and also been more understanding of my parents and stuff and why they felt yeah it felt. exactly it was out of love mm -hmm. it was like definitely they were worried they yeah. were like what you gonna do mm -hmm. and the funny thing about portia portia is so <laughs> successful you know oh, and portia has done things in her career that i'm always just in awe of oh thank you for so so look at the girl with the natural hair the shortcut the afro the wigs, the ponytail, the piercings, the piercings, you know what I'm saying? The the braid twist, like Portia does it all at her corporate job. Yeah, I work for the federal like, government. Come on, like let's talk about it. I think that the more that we step into whatever mm -hmm. the hell we want to step into, I mean like look, if you don't feel confident or comfortable to do it, you don't have to. Yeah. But I do think to preach a message of don't be afraid to test the waters and be yourself and see what could happen. Mm -hmm. I think that for her it's been great it hasn't hindered you, you know yeah what I'm saying? At all. because who you are and your work ethic and your experience mm -hmm. has blown everybody away yeah but but if you want to wear a lace front wear your lace front wear your <laughs> okay. listen listen don't tell nobody like don't come on my channel people come on all the time if when you have twist outs you're not natural this is my mother effing hair okay don't piss me off today because listen Listen to me. Why can't I do a twist out? Why do I have to do a wash and go? Who are you? Are you the police? Are you my police? I, I can't stand it. Don't tell me how to wear my hair and I won't tell you how to wear yours. Okay? That part. I don't yeah, understand. Yeah. I had some faux locks, okay, in my head as you guys probably know a little bit ago. I did a video just doing my makeup, touch up, whatever. A black man okay came on my channel i don't know how why where who <laughs> called you to over here sir this is for black women only <laughs> i'm joking i'm joking i do have some men here and i love y'all for real y'all be still be here but honestly he came and he was like the problem of black women is you don't want to wear your hair we told y'all over and over again we don't like fake hair who are you talking to i want to know like are you my daddy <laughs> My own father, my own father knows. Not <laughs> he can't tell me. Like he can't tell me nothing. You know, like. But you, sir, are gonna tell me that the black men can be told us. <laughs> Ashy lips and knees. We hate fake hair. Y'all still, on still to... doing it because we want to still do it. I want to have faux locks. I want to have a wig on. I want to have box braids. I want to have a lace front. Like. We do it for we us. We told y'all don't be trash. But what, what's happening? <laughs> what, what's happening? We told y'all to be providers. But what's happening? I'm just tired. I'm tired. I'm just tired because, like, I don't understand. Don't police me and I don't police you. You know what I'm saying? And I really firmly believe that. Like, I'm tired. And I think that the knowledge of the history of black women, our hair, our physical body in general, and what's been done to it over the course of history, right to now be in a place that we're in right now to choose to choose whether yeah. how and which way you want <laughs> to wear and do and be right what gives any of us the right to tell the black person male or female how to how to be you know how hard it is to be in 2020 you know how hard it is to wake up <laughs> and open your phone and see other black people be brutalized and murdered and die young i mean come on like but you choose to focus on a 
an actress just now learning to love her hair, let the woman live. She got there somehow. I'm happy for her, you know? Mm -hmm. Focusing on me on YouTube wearing faux locks, making you mad, black man. Mind your business. Go Clownery. find you a black girl that want to be with your little clown ass because it ain't going to be me, I'll tell you that. Don't nobody want to be with him, which is why <laughs> he's, he's mad. He's mad it's on the internet comments. attacking black women <laughs> like, as they you, are wanting to Did you do. search black women YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is they do I feel like there are people there are trolls out there how did you find that me? is what they do because they have nothing else going on and I think black women oh. succeeding making choices for themselves being happy mm -hmm. for some for some men some black men whatever like it it, it grinds their gears because it's like, how, wait a second how dare you wait a second without my approval and I think Do black women have adopted the patriarchy in that, yes, how dare you black girl be this free? Yeah. Because where I come from, you can't be that free. And we where I come from, you need to be at this way, look this way, da da da, da. Mm -hmm. We should talk about that, though. Oh, I my think, gosh. Because to give an example that I don't mean to be off topic, but like <laughs> Will Smith uh, and Jada Pinkett Smith, the way they raised um, Jaden and Willow, I think a lot of black people in particular were like, how dare these children like have piercings or do this or be out here doing that? And like, those are some of the most well-adjusted, well spoken You listen to Willow speak, she makes sense. Like she's yeah. very articulate. She's clearly well-read. And they have empathy and, and compassion. Absolutely. They have a human quality about them. The most kids that are famous, grown up famous they, don't they, have. They lack for yeah. sure. So it's like, I think when black people do things that other people, like other black people find outside of blackness or like their idea of blackness really mm -hmm. it becomes like an affront to them it becomes yeah. personal it becomes like well if you're like this but i think like this what does that say about me mm -hmm. so because i don't want to interrogate how this makes me feel i'm gonna go outward and attack you oh my god this is a word so i think we need to talk about that so if you're like somebody who's about to comment now something really <laughs> negative in your feelings. Ask yourself why. Yes, take a step back. Do I feel <laughs> offended? Do I see two black young women thriving, glowing, you know, I mean heat, you know, yeah, sweaty, truly. you know, <laughs> out here giving y'all words and history, you know what I'm saying? If it offends you, ask yourself why, you know, because honestly, that's, I don't offend nobody intentionally. That's, my, yeah. that's never my intention. But I understand that we, we all have our own journey. You know what I mean? Like literally. Your, what you eat make me shit and vice versa. Like, I really stand by that. It doesn't affect me. If you want to have a wig on, sis, wear your wigs. Lay it down good. Look, I'll be seeing them, you know. But then again, it's also your scalp, you know, whatever. But anyways. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like we had a good dialogue. Yeah. I'm happy with what we I talked think we, about. I think we got it. Yeah. I think we got it. We got it. Thanks for watching. If you're all the way at the end of this long, <laughs> educational, informative, yes, I, spicy, what else? Give me some more adjectives. You know, hard hitting. Oh, hard hitting. Um, really riveting. Yes, we we were out here <laughs> dropping knowledge and gems, and I feel like if this touches you, let us know. Like if you Please. were moved, if you learned something. Um, I was really happy to be a part of this conversation with you. You are the conversation, honey. Oh, listen, and y'all better, because Portia is the most interesting follow that you will follow, because she, she give it up. She give it up for real. Okay? I'm funny on Instagram, She's I promise. I'll put her information right here. Dark Skin Aunt Biz. Yes, go Two follow underscores. Three underscores. Three underscores. Just started a podcast <laughs> about Flavor of and Love. And guess why? Like, what is the topic? Of this podcast. It's such a random <laughs> podcast. I'm gonna leave that link down below too. Yes, I please know. go follow. What so. what what sparked this podcast? Like <laughs> <laughs> so random. So my friend Lauren, who you've met, mm -hmm. uh, we had a nice little birthday thing a few weeks ago. We were on a boat. It was nice. Leo um, energy. Big yeah. big. Yes, Leo absolutely. Energy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so for my birthday, Lauren and I were talking. And she was like, I really want to do a podcast about flavor of love. And like, you was like, oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because like, hear me out, y'all. So if you go on any part of social media, what are some of the most used gifts you see? You see New York, you see Hottie, you see all of these women from VH1 being memed, 
right? And we can talk about black women turning to me. That's a different video topic. But we I do part two, part three, part four. Right, we can keep going. We're going to do it on Zoom when you leave me at the DC. You'll leave me. I am leaving her. She's so sad, but no, we're going to hang out. I'll be back in December. But we, I just thought it was, like, interesting that, like, with this show's 15 years old, but it still remains. definitely much shaped our cultural landscape as millennials. So I was like, you know, this can't just be like a, uh, oh, this is what happened on this old TV show that we all used to watch. I think it really needs to be a cultural commentary on race, on gender, on social issues. Because I mean, the first, we've, we've done the first two episodes and there's racism, there's fat phobia, there's colorism, it's all the things, all the, all the all threads the on Twitter. Okay, exactly. All the things that we are unpacking on the internet today were, that show was right Rampant. with them. Okay, very much so. So if you're looking for something funny, um, entertaining, but also riveting. educational, riveting, <laughs> then please, please go follow um, Love in the Time of VH1, The Flavor of Love Days. I love this. Um, I love we're, it. We're on Spotify. So. I love it. I'm going to leave the link down below, you guys. Thanks for watching, honestly. Yeah. I hope this was helpful. I really want to only ever be informative, Absolutely. but also encouraging and uplifting. It is hard to be a black woman at any time in history, Absolutely. you know what I'm saying? Of course, of course. But right now, I think it's just hard to find your footing. There are no rules, you know? There are no rules. Wear your hair. We know why we tap into fake hair and we tap into it like we know why. So let those women that choose to do that, do that with freedom, yeah. you know? And if everyone come be natural, you, I got you. So this, many this, videos, this, such this good content. Is, Cup runneth over of, of products, advice, tips, and tricks, and tools. I mean, it's all here. You are the resource. It's all <laughs> You are the moment. She is the moment. Done. Talk about it. Subscribe. So, so I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. All oh, this video is long, but it is <laughs> it's everything. And I'm so grateful that you talked with me today. I love you guys. I hope you love yourselves. Please do. Hope you feel encouraged, you know. We're hot. They're so hot. My We're hair, on my mom's porch. <laughs> my hair shrunk up, child. You know? I, it's, still, it's still beautiful. We're still out here. I love you guys. I really do. I think that black women are so, so, so special. And I want you to feel that way. No matter how the hell you choose to be. You know what I mean? Agree. Give me a thumbs up. Comment. Because we did all this in the smoldering heat. For y'all. So give us a comment. Give us a thumb up. Share the video with your black friends. Yes. Please. You know? Love y'all. See you in the next one.